Hi everyone, welcome to Sunday Online from the free here in Frinton. It is great to have you join us. My name is Mark. Shall we pray before we sing some songs of worship? And maybe just in the choir, in the silence, just remember back over the last week, the places, the people, the challenges, the joys. And just thank God that he's been with you during those times. Father, we thank you that you're not distant, that you're not absent. Thank you, Father, that in your word it says that you are Emmanuel, you are God with us. Thank you for your promise never to leave us, never to forget us. Thank you that you've been with us over the past week. Thank you that you are with us now. You are good. Your love endures forever. And we choose to be worshippers of you. Wherever we're tuning in from, wherever we're watching this, whatever time of day, we choose now to worship you and to give you our best. Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we praise you and we worship you. Amen. So let's do that, shall we? Let's sing together. Let's give worship to our God.
As always, there's a few things that I'd love to share with you. Uh, different events, different things coming up that you may want to be a part of. And the first one is that this Sunday evening, the 27th of October, we're going to be joining together with our friends, brothers and sisters from other local churches to worship Jesus together. We've been doing this over the past year, uh, maybe every couple of months, and uh, we've moved around the churches. It's been really special uh, doing this with our brothers and sisters. I'd love you to come and join us. Uh, at Homelands on Sunday evening for united worship and prayer. And then next weekend, uh, this is kind of the final call for our day with Salim Munaya. Uh, we are holding a conference here with Salim, who's coming over from Jerusalem uh, on pathways to peace in troubled times. As we've been saying the last few weeks, Salim has got 30 years experience working in peace and reconciliation work, uh, particularly in the Middle East. And that is so relevant at this time. So on Saturday, uh, Salim's going to be helping us to understand the historical context of how we've got to where we are in the Middle East. He's going to be sharing stories of peace and reconciliation and then helping us to think about that topic for our ministries, wherever we are, for our lives. Uh, really important day. Would love you to be there on Saturday. Uh, kind of book your tickets if you haven't done so already. And uh, Salim will be with us on the Sunday as well, preaching here at the free. And uh, we're hoping uh, we're going to have a message from him for Sunday online as well. Another group that might be of interest to you or somebody uh, that you know is that our bereavement group starts this Thursday uh, here at the free. Again, this might be for you, might be for somebody that you know, but a really fantastic group that's helped many people as we've been running them here uh, with age, uh, age Well East. And uh, they're really gifted in helping us to understand bereavement and how we can begin uh, to move on in our bereavement journey. So that might be for you or somebody you know. And finally, don't forget the fireworks party, uh, family fireworks uh, that we'll be hosting with Birch Hall Adventures. Uh, details are on the screen. Tickets are absolutely flying for this. So if you were hoping to come, uh, don't leave it too long. Uh, scan the QR code or get in touch online and uh, you can book your tickets for that event. Last Sunday at the Free, we celebrated uh, some baptisms. Vicky and Charlie got baptised and we wanted to share uh, their baptisms with you. So what you're going to see now is uh, Vicky's testimony followed by her baptism moment, uh, which we captured on film. And then you'll hear Charlie's testimony and then you'll see him getting baptised. I really hope uh, that this encourages you. My name's Victoria Wicks and um, I'm married to Dave. We've been married for eight years, and, um, but we've been together about 16 years, which is awesome. And uh, I have two children. I had a little boy from my first marriage and um, he was with us for two and a half years and sadly um, he died of meningitis quite suddenly. Um, which was a shock for all of the family. Um, but I also have a daughter and she's married to a Dutch guy 
and she and our two grandsons live in the Netherlands. Uh, now when we visit in the Netherlands, which we do <coughs> as much as we can, we go to church with them on a Sunday as they are worship leaders in their church. It's very similar to the free. It's a very similar concept to what goes on here. And um, every time throughout the years, every time we go to church, I feel that I'm moving closer to where I should be. Um, I grew up with my grandparents had a lot to do with um, Church of England church and I used to go to church with them every Sunday and the family came. I have three siblings and we used to go to church on Sunday with mum and nan and pops which was granddad. And um, I went to Sunday school and all the things that you do as a child and I thought that I had, I was growing up as a Christian, um, doing the right things pleasing people or not and living the best life that I could but in and out of my life um, there were times when I didn't think like a Christian should think and I kind of lost my way a bit and all the time I was looking for something in my adult life um, I'd do one thing and I'd be searching for something else and I'd think yeah that, that's okay and then that that was okay for a while and then there's something else I know there's something else and, and I've always been looking for something else um, when Dave and I first got together uh, I'd had a quiet time of what I call my healing time for a few years um, and I was on my own I had my little flat I had a good job and then Dave came into my life, which was amazing. And we started when we were thinking that, yeah, you know, this is going to go somewhere and we want to be together. Um, we started to look for a church and we went to one and we didn't feel quite right. And we got married in another church, but we stayed there a little while, but something wasn't, we didn't feel comfortable. Um, but we often used to come to Frinton, walking along, and we'd hear the most beautiful music coming out and people singing and happy and people leaving this church. And I said to Dave, shall we, shall we try and go to this church one Sunday? So we did and we came in and it was the most amazing feeling here. And I felt finally, or I have felt finally at home and Tell that now the last few months and I've been kind of working towards my faith and I could feel in here that I can feel Jesus is with me. I no longer have that wanting to look for more because I've found what I'm looking for. It's like all of a sudden my soul feels full and my heart feels full of love and I'm getting quite emotional about it because that's how I feel now. I feel that Jesus is, is it actually in my life? And he's there and he knows, I, he's always been there. And I've asked for help and I've always had to help. And the things I've asked for in my past life, I, I've been wanting something and looking for that something. And whatever I was looking for, I thought I was looking for, it was there, but it wasn't quite right. But now, it, I feel like it's, I'm finally whole. I feel a lot less anxious about things. I feel my life is, is full, it's fulfilled. My life is fulfilled. And Jesus is planting if you like things into me and it's coming out it's resonating I feel like I'm I'm smiling at people in the street and they're smiling back at me and I've always been a happy sort of person um, or I thought I, hopefully I have been and um, but I just feel that I, I can talk to somebody in the supermarket and 
I feel like I've known them for a while and it's like I'm, I feel I'm putting myself out there and, and yeah, Jesus is with me. It's something that I've been thinking about. I was christened as a baby, as most people are, most children are, um, and I was given my name, Victoria. Thank you. <laughs> um, but that was my decision. I was too young to know. Um, and I feel now that it's my decision that I want to be washed clean. I want to walk into that Sea of Galilee and have my sins washed away from me, whatever they might be. And I just feel it's going to make my life whole to be baptised and be in the family of Christ um, and walk with him and let him show me the way because I have trust and I have the faith in Jesus that I can live the rest of my life with him. It's good, it's good. Vicky, we've heard your testimony, what Jesus has done in your life, but I say we baptise on the declaration of faith. So if you just read these words for me, same as Charlie. I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and I believe that he died and rose again to save me. Fantastic. And Vicky, do you commit to serving Jesus in the body of his church? I certainly do. <laughs> hey, come on. Wonderful. Come down this end with us and we'll take your glasses off as well. That's it. Wonderful. Vicky, we have heard your confession of faith and your belief in the saving power of Jesus. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we gladly baptise you into Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. My name's Charlie, I'm 25. I've been born and bred around here, I was born in Colchester and yeah, lived in Clacton the majority of my life and I now live in Colchester. I work in the motor trade, I suppose is what people want to know, and I'm now studying at uni to hopefully become a music teacher one day. Life before I was a Christian wasn't terrible. I had a really good upbringing, lots of friends, really good family. I can't really complain about my childhood life before I was a Christian, it's all it was all pretty good, pretty smooth sailing. One thing I would say is as a teenager and in, into my young adult life, I had a very bleak outlook on life. Um, I was searching for something. I would have described myself as an atheist, but I always believed in everything happens for a reason. So I, was, I feel like internally I was always looking and searching for something more than just life itself. I came to know Jesus through Alpha here at Frinton. Um, it was something I'd been thinking about. I, at uni, started experimenting in spirituality, looking at that side of life, and a lot of meditation back then is what I did. Um, yeah, joined the Alpha, really safe space to talk, to process everything, to go through your thoughts, and if anyone here is thinking about it, I'd definitely say to join it. It is really, really good, nice to talk, get different people's perspectives, and the free meal isn't terrible. On the Alpha Away Day is the day I'd say that I really came to know Jesus. I think we were doing the uh, like Holy Spirit. As a group we were to stand and, and pray and I remember praying, God if, if you hear me, can you get Mark to come over and pray with me? And I waited a little bit and before I knew it, I felt a tap on my shoulder, hearing Mark's voice in my ear saying, can I pray for you? I'm a very anxious person normally. Um, I'd say I deal with anxiety in a lot of situations and. It's really given me peace in that sense and a hope and knowing that everything will work out. I think a great example is last year I was applying for uni and my application got cancelled and I remember saying to God, why? Why is this being cancelled? I really, really want to do this and why is there so many roadblocks in my way? 
And it wasn't until this year when I started uni and I reflect on the last year of my life and I go, I needed that. I needed that year and just because I didn't know then doesn't mean it won't work out. And I think that's one thing I really appreciate is knowing that everything will work out. Life will be okay and through God I can I know it will work out and that is to me really really important. I remember at one of Mark's sermons, I can't tell you when it was, but he said let God drive, you know, we all want to be in control of our life, we all want to be at the will and that's something I do a lot and I'm sure many people do is we want to be in control of our lives and he said let go, let God take control and ever since like, that service I said okay I'm going to stop and I'm going to let God take the wheel and funnily enough everything sort of worked out since then it's been fine almost smooth sailing I think would be the word so for me that is the big impact knowing that everything will be okay and I'll be alright at the end of it. The reason why I want to get baptised I feel like it's the next step in my journey of faith um, I want to say bye to my old self and be anew and be filled with the Holy Spirit through baptism. I used to come to the services and it was always something I dab, I sort of went, I want to do that, but I think everyone says the questions, am I good enough to do that? Have I done enough to do it? Um, and then finally I thought, okay, time to bite the bullet. Charlie, we've heard your testimony which was just wonderful about what Jesus has done in your life but we baptise on the declaration of faith so if you just read the words on this card for me that would be wonderful I declare that Jesus Christ is my Lord and I believe that he died and rose again to save me wonderful and Charlie do you commit to serving Jesus in the body of his church I do wonderful come over here Charlie We've heard your confession of faith and your belief in the saving power of Jesus. So in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, we gladly baptise you into Jesus' death, his burial and his resurrection.
as you can see, we're going to share communion together. If you haven't got some bread and some wine or some juice ready where you are, uh, why don't you pause this video and uh, go and fetch those so that you can share with us in this really special meal. Isaiah chapter 53 says this, he was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows acquainted with the deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. He was a man of sorrows. Who is this man of sorrows? It's Jesus. It's Jesus Christ. Isaiah wrote these words many, many hundreds of years before Jesus was born. But this is who he's prophesying. This is who he is talking about. The man of sorrows is Jesus. Jesus willingly became the man of sorrows. Wrestling with his fate in Gethsemane. A brutal arrest. Whipped. Tortured. Beaten. And crucified. Jesus is our man of sorrows. As many of you will know, we are reading through the New Testament this year as a church. And right now we're in the Gospel of John. And this is how John describes what happened to Jesus as he was crucified. Pilate, Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and they put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, crucify, crucify, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priests answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus, carrying his own cross. He went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with two others, one on each side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, I have written what I have written. Then the soldiers crucified Jesus. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with deepest grief. We turned our backs on him and looked the other way. He was despised and we did not care. I want to invite you to just take some time. We're going to pause we're going to be silent. I want you to reflect on what it cost Jesus to be your man 
of sorrows. To take some time to reflect on the cost of the cross. Let's do that together. Isaiah 53 goes on to say this. All of us, like sheep, have strayed away. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Jesus allowed himself to be the man of sorrows for your sin and for mine. The sins of us all. Let's take some time to think, maybe even over the last few days, the last few weeks. When did you fail to do the will of God? Where have you and I messed up over these days? When did we take matters into our own hands? When did we say or do something that we shouldn't have? When did we not do or not say something that we should have? The Bible says that when we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. And he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So again, let's take some time of quiet just to reflect. Where have we missed the mark? Where do we know that we have sinned? Let's take some time to reflect on those things and to ask Jesus for his forgiveness. Jesus, the fact that you chose to become the man of sorrows is the best news in the world. Because it's through your suffering on that cross that the power of sin is defeated. Jesus, you didn't stay dead, but you triumphed over death and sin so that we can know forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, that pardon and forgiveness are now ours, a gift of your grace. We worship you, Jesus, our man of sorrows, but also our risen Lord. Amen. And Jesus wants us to remember. He wants us to remember the cost but he wants us to, rem to remember as well and to celebrate that forgiveness that he has won for us. And so he gives us this simple meal to remember. And we're told that on the night when he was betrayed, Jesus was having dinner with his disciples and he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body he said, it's given for you. He said, take and eat in remembrance of me. So I want to encourage you to do that now. To take your bread, to eat it, to share it amongst yourselves and to remember and to give thanks for Jesus' body given for you and for me.
And Jesus, we are once again staggered at the cost. Staggered that your body was given for each one of us. And we thank you, Jesus, that you chose the way of the cross. You chose to be a man of sorrows so that we could live. Thank you for your body given. And we go on to read that in the same way after they had eaten, Jesus took the cup and we can imagine, can't we, the wine they were drinking, the redness of it, pointing towards blood. And Jesus took it a step further and he said, this is my blood. It's the blood of a new covenant, a new promise poured out for the forgiveness of sins. He said, take and drink and remember. So let's do that now. And Jesus, we praise you, we thank you that that new promise, that new covenant is a promise of forgiveness. It's a promise that we can be right with God. Thank you that where we've blown it, where we've got it wrong, where we've missed the mark, either by what we've done or by what we haven't done, thank you, Jesus, that because of your blood shed, There is forgiveness. Thank you for the promise of a new start with you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's continue to worship our risen Lord Jesus.
Thank you so much for joining me today for Sunday Online. It's always special to know uh, that there are many of you watching at a distance. And as we often say, you are so a part of our church. We realise that for some of you, you can't be present with us here in the building for lots of reasons. But we're so glad you choose to worship with us online and do keep in touch. We love to hear from you, either email or give us a call here at the church. We'd love uh, to be cheering you on. We'd love to be praying for you in whatever way that we can be. Have a really good week, and uh, we hope you're able to join us next Sunday for Sunday Online.